Women, what's the main difference you see between the guys who get the girls and the guys who don't? Story 1. Note, am guy. Date grills. That said, number 1, hygiene. Guys who clean the frick up. We're not even talking about being clean-shaven and having a decent haircut here. Just people who shower daily and generally use soap and shampoo instead of just letting it all hang out and relying on body spray and deodorant to stay fresh. Number two, confidence. It's a stupid, stupid, stupid double standard, but it's one many women and many men are not interested in letting go of. Guys are expected to get the girl. Girls who don't put themselves out there are defended for it. Guys who don't are considered losers, betas, gammas, epsilons, deltas, and whatever else the hip young folks call guys who are more inward oriented. Number three, guys who are put together versus those who are not. For example, is the interior of your car clean? Do you dress like you dress yourself or your mom? Are your clothes clean? When I step into your house, is it clean and orderly or is it a complete mess? Do you cook or does everything come out of a box? No one's saying you need to make a crown rack of lamb, but for the love of God, know how to make fried egg drunchies. Number four. Guys who are worldly versus those who are the one-trick pony. Following the previous point, when I step into your living space, am I going to be treated to a room that is full of World of Warcraft stuff and absolutely nothing else? Like, for me, that'd be a home run, because while I'm usually quiet and reserved, I will never, ever shut up if you get onto the subject of World of Warcraft. But if not, and if it's clear World of Warcraft is a huge passion for you, there's no room in there for a relationship. If she doesn't like it, that will be a boat anchor your relationship never escapes because there's only so much negotiating around it you can do before you concede that she's not going to be interested in someone with such a burdensome hobby. Number five, aspirations and goals. While there are literally women out there who will live vicariously through the accomplishments of their husbands and claim partial responsibility, not unfounded either, for helping them reach it, there's far fewer who will stick around with a guy whose goal in life is to go from being the night shift stock clerk at the grocery store to being the night shift supervisor, asterisk. That guy who will legit be okay working the same retail job he had 10 years ago in another 10 years is going to find himself struggling because at the end of the day, women are not interested in entering any sort of long-term relationship with a guy who's financially dangerous. You might be able to live, barely, on wages hanging around the minimum wage, but that ain't retiring money. The grills you date have some serious expectations. Story 2. Looking after oneself. This amounts to basic hygiene, clean clothing, and simple maintenance, such as brushing one's hair, or if you have facial hair, keeping it trimmed and tidy. Perfection isn't the key, just look like you did a bit more than roll out of bed. Being realistic in your expectations of who you're actually attractive to. If you're unemployed and spend all your time playing video games, you're not likely to be attractive to someone that has ambitious career goals. If you are an overweight couch potato, chances are that you're not going to be a great prospect to someone that loves to exercise and or does a lot of activities outdoors. Gender role expectations. This one tends to be more subtle, as some guys don't realize that they have these internalized expectations, but keep in mind that you are both equals. Women do not have patience for a guy that expects his girlfriend slash wife to be his maid or his mother, i.e. cook, clean, do laundry, do all the bills, or remind him about basic things like eat your veggies or see a doctor. Addendum, there's a difference between choosing to do these things and avoiding doing them because it's someone so-and-so's job. Women tend to prefer a guy that is secure in his masculinity and comfortable splitting chores. It's not emasculating to do laundry or help with dinner, nor for her to do more of the work outside if you're not really into yard work. Arrogance, it's one thing to be confident, but cockiness tends to drive women away. Men that think they're God's gift to women or view them as conquests are usually looked down on. Nice guys, trademark. Going on about the friend zone or a girl leading you on because she was nice to you is a surefire way to ensure nobody wants to be with you. Guys that have this view that we owe men sensual favors simply by virtue of a guy being nice are a huge turnoff. 
Women are allowed to turn down a date simply because they're not interested. They don't owe anyone a chance. I'm a nice person. Nice is boring. What else do you have to offer? Shared hobbies, passion for a sport, artistic expression, etc. Also, for what it's worth, all of these tips apply to women as well. Or to anyone with respect to their preferred gender. Don't be a dong. Don't be lazy. And be realistic in what you bring to the table. You are not owed love or sensual favors from anyone. The nice guy part is spot on. I've been friends with guys and had zero idea he had any romantic feelings and then be ripped apart because I friend-zoned him. I'm the girl who pays her own way, so it's not like I'm letting a guy take me to fancy dinners and acting like I didn't know he liked me. We're talking about wings and beers while watching the game. Story 3. I've seen guy friends lock in and pursue ladies that were either uninterested or unachievable for really long periods of time. Like, I don't know, there's this narrative about the friend zone, but it's not that the lady friend zoned them, it's literally that guy is literally orbiting themselves around. Like, she's clearly not interested and already said no, so he's basically a butthole who's making her more and more uncomfortable around him over time. And the victim complex their guy has about it is just the weirdest thing. So one thing any guy can do is to spend less time pursuing individuals who aren't interested. I've hung out with guys I would have slept with slash boyfriended right then and there if they weren't swooning over someone who wasn't going to reciprocate. Other advice? Use Tinder slash OkCupid. I can't emphasize this enough. You don't go door to door handing your resumes in person anymore. It's weird. Same with dating. Don't holler at me in the streets. Find me online. Also the same with finding a job. Networking is important. Networking is about finding real relationships, friends, coworkers, not dates. But like jobs, your network can sometimes get you a better job or date than the dating app. If you're not getting enough dates, you can't afford to try only one app or not networking. Also, networking doesn't mean harassing people for dates. It means forming natural relationships that can become dates or become, hey, my friend is single. You'd be surprised at how many people complain about being single but put zero effort into making connections possible, before the chance of ruining them, of course. Don't be afraid of rejection. Rejection is awesome. It's a chance to move on to someone new. Also, don't be a creeper. Don't be afraid to be single. Don't have stupid perspectives on women. If it's a roleplay fetish, that's one thing. But if you genuinely believe women should be property or something stupid like that, then stay single forever. Anti-social justice warrior YouTubers can distort your idea of what positive male masculinity and positive feminism is supposed to be about by parading endlessly fringe people. Overindulging in their vernacular can be a more modern version of the go-make-me-a-sandwich type sexism, only this time it's just sexism under the guise of fake intellectualism. You will not appear smart to a woman. The red pill isn't flawless dating advice, but it is very good birth control. Story 4. These observations are for both men and women. I've seen the following in both who are unsuccessful. I use the general you here. Just not putting yourself in a position to meet anyone. I'm super introverted, so I get it. But if your whole life is sleep, work, gym, TV, sleep, you're not going to get anywhere. Not taking care of yourself. Bad hygiene, sloppy appearance, etc. Wanting qualities in a partner that you yourself cannot match like wanting an ambitious doctor when you're lazy and underemployed, wanting an attractive, fit person when you are obese, being desperate. Every date you do get, you pin all your hopes and dreams upon them. You stifle down your personality in an attempt to get a significant other. You become clingy and or move too fast, scaring them away. Sort of like above, having one-itis, Fixating on maybe a person in your friend group or an acquaintance and becoming obsessed with them leads to fruitless, unrequited crushes. I suspect people who do this a lot are scared of intimacy and use their crushes as a way to avoid real relationships, anger, or entitlement issues. Basically taking rejection terribly. Rejection sucks, but resist sending that DM calling someone a wussy or a butthole if they won't go out with you. You're only confirming their decision to reject you as the correct one. Becoming angry at your preferred gender and painting them all with the same brush, after a run of bad luck, it's easy to be like, men are freaking pigs, or women are shallow witches. 
but this bitterness is unfair and holding you back. Too long didn't read r slash nice guys and r slash nice girls. Story 5. Once you get out of school into the working world, I notice a big divide between people who do things outside of work and people who don't, men and women included. So many people, I've been guilty myself, just let themselves become very boring. People who find someone find them doing an activity, hobby, whatever. You have to put yourself in a position to meet a like-minded person, which means if all you do is go to work, go to the gym, and not talk to anyone, and play men's beer league sports, you are not going to meet many eligible women. Also, let your freak flag fly. If you love gaming or Game of Thrones or sock puppets, don't hide it when looking for a partner. Trying to be cool or normal comes off boring. Look for events where you'll meet other people who love the same thing. And online dating is a great way to meet people. So many people still think it's for losers. Nope, being single when you want to have someone and doing nothing about it because you're too cool is for losers. Oh my god, this. So many boring people out there. My favorite thing to ask people when out at bars slash meeting new people is to ask what they do for fun. Can get a big look into their world by what they do for fun. Story 6. I'm the master at bad analogies, so I shall share a relevant one here. We all have a cup that measures how interesting, as in how interested others are into dating oneself, we are. We just have to fill it up to improve our chances. Some things add to it, like good hygiene or confidence, and some things subtract, like bad hygiene or insecurity. Even if you're not perfect, fill your cup with good traits to make up for your bad ones. The rest of this thread covered what traits are good and bad for the most part. You still need to come out positive and have a cup filled with something. What traits that cup contains attracts the type of people who value those traits over others, so don't feel too envious of buttholes who get a girl who values physical attractiveness over basic human politeness, because that probably isn't the type of relationship you're looking for. Also, your cup may be filled to the mother freaking brim, but sometimes that's just not what some women are looking for. Your cup of interests just ain't interesting to them. Women aren't one entity. It's a group of individuals comprising about half the world's population, so there isn't a be-all, end-all trait. Just fill the dang cup with the good crap to make up for the crappy crap. Story 7. Men who attract women tend to be Number 1. Fun Number 2. Decently polite Number 3. Good hygiene Men who don't tend to be Number 1. Rude Number 2. Imposing Number 3. Questionable hygiene or worse Ultimately, look like a fundamentally good mating prospect. You could objectively be the best-looking man in the world, but if your stench precedes you, no one will want to touch you. You could be the wealthy millionaire next door, but if you're explicitly rude and demeaning, no one is going to want to flirt with you. If you have no personality or willingness to explore new stuff, it is unlikely someone will want to spend time with you. When I say mating, I mean not just the act, but a potential long-term mate at a primal level. It means look reasonably healthy, appear non-threatening, and kind. It doesn't mean men need to scream that they are looking for wives. It doesn't mean women are seeking alimony and child support. It means that you are worth the time investment. If the return on investment is positive, that is all that matters. That may be one night, one month, one year, or one lifetime. Story 8. They don't change their personality every time they're interested in someone. I've seen this countless times. A guy tries too hard to get a lady interested in him by changing how he acts, talks, and interests to bait her in. If it doesn't work, they get upset. Just be a decent being and true to your good personality. Be confident in what you enjoy. Maybe you enjoy Magic the Gathering and vlog about it, and she doesn't know what that is and thinks it's stupid. Who cares? Don't act like you think it's stupid because she does. You guys might vibe on something else. Also, men who work hard on bettering themselves may be emotionally or mentally, economically, etc. No, you don't have to be rich or work 80 plus hours a week. But if you're actually trying in life and are proud of yourself, instead of complaining while sitting on the couch all day, you're golden in life, and some lady is going to see that and admire you for it. And if she's the right one, she'll support you and work hard right next to you. Story 9. Haven't seen it yet, so... Only talking to women when they have romantic intentions slash goals already set. I see a bunch of dudes fail because they only talk to a select few girls with a specific end goal in mind. 
So often they fail to learn anything about the person and focus on selling themselves and jumping straight into bed. Just relax. If you talk to 10 girls like normal human beings, you might find a spark with one of them. But if you limit yourself to the few girls you imagined a spark with, you'll be much less successful. I know people who pretty much met people through other friends. If you have a healthy mix of male and female friends, you're more likely to meet someone that way. It is a worry for women to end up with an abusive person, so having a good attitude around other women is a good safety sign. Any date who gets jealous of your friends who are women isn't worth dating either. Story 10. Bit late, but my take is people who have no self-awareness or self-analysis. They don't understand themselves or their motives, and so have no idea if they're moving in a healthy direction or not in any relationship they're in. Maybe they have unhealthy habits, or they have a crappy, obnoxious friend group, or are a functional alcoholic. I don't know. I know a lot of people who keep making the same mistakes in fun new ways for years and never stop to think about why. It's just, if they feel something strongly, they go ahead and act on that feeling without necessarily even knowing what the feeling is. They never see patterns and often adopt crappy, blaming attitudes. If they do have success connecting with someone nice, their unrealistic expectations, self-destructive behavior, and defensiveness about every single aspect of their life drives that person away. Basically, go get some therapy, explore the whys of your mind and behaviors. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video and have a wonderful day. Story 11. There is a fantastic article on Crack.com by John Cheese about improving yourself. Basically, it boils down to, imagine your dream person. What skills do they have? Now, what kind of skills would they be attracted to? What skills above and beyond the standard person do you have? None? Few? Now get your butt in gear and achieve some skills. People like people who do things. Learn a language, or how to cook, or do a sport slash martial art. Take up some kind of craft or instrument. Do something. Being nice, a good listener, and respectful aren't a ticket into my pants. They're basic human requirements. Example, my husband. Respectful, good listener, kind, can cook well, great with our daughter, does jujitsu, amazing board game player, solid knowledge of ancient Roman history, handy with building furniture and computers. Add to that list, nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills, computer hacking skills. Story 12. I know guys who don't have trouble getting girlfriends, and guys who never seem to be able to find a girl. I find guys who have girlfriends very respectful of women in general and talk to women like they talk to one of the guys. That is, focusing on topics of common interest, rather than, what kind of things would women like to talk about? The guys I know who have trouble landing girlfriends often make very sexist remarks and have a very condescending attitude towards women. It might be a vicious cycle as well. They have trouble talking to women, can't seem to hold proper conversations with them, so they start to see women as aloof or mean, so they begin to form prejudices against them. On the other hand, looks also matter. I think all my decent-looking guy friends are taken. Story 13. Having a plan for your life, some prospects, the ability to hold down a job. I don't need my partner to be rich or even currently employed, but I need someone who will be working to make something of themselves, or at least get their share of rent paid. As a guy, I can definitely say I agree. It's got nothing to do with money. It's about discipline, the ability to work hard and commit to your future. Anyone who's ever dated a deadbeat with no ambition or ability to work hard at something will understand. You don't have to be making millions. You can be flipping burgers, and I'll respect the heck out of you that you work hard to support yourself. Story 14. Lack of whining, along with a decent amount of confidence and respect. I've known guys that weren't terrible human beings, but all they did was whine about everybody who ever wronged them, when half the problems they had were of their own doing, because they made choices that took them there. The best part of my current relationship is that I want to take care of him, and he wants to take care of me. We respect each other as human beings, and while we have a friendly sports rivalry, we value each other and go out of our way to make the other feel good. We have our normal complaints about work, life, and stuff, but ultimately we take what life deals us and go with the flow. Story 15. I know most women aren't going to admit this, but typically men with higher incomes get more women. 
I used to work at a sports bar where professional Giants baseball players would come in, and they would have women swarming them. I know many women who brag about meeting doctors, lawyers, and how lucky they were. I know OkCupid did a study which showed a direct correlation between hookups, dates, and marriages, and income level in the online dating worlds. I feel like anyone, man or woman, who hasn't noticed this hasn't been paying attention enough. Lots of lawyers and doctors don't even earn that much. Bragging about meeting a lawyer and getting lucky so you can mooch off him makes me cringe so much. Sounds like my partner's ex-wife. Story 16. Being a decent person with emotional stability is a huge one. I'm a painfully awkward Michael Sarah, possibly with Asperger's, but I've been in many romantic relationships since high school with girls most people consider cute. I'm not buff or handsome. I'm just a super dorky dude that's genuine and not creepy. Another thing is to always improve yourself. If you want to marry someone that's smart, you need to be educated. If you want to marry someone beautiful, you have to put an effort on how you dress. Sure, you may look like Kim Jong-un, but it's effort that matters. At the end of the day, most women will give you a chance so long as you're not creepy or a 500-pound slob. Story 17. Wash your butts. Wear clean clothes. Brush your teeth. Stop smoking. Deodorant. Change your cat's litter daily so you don't smell like cat pee. Shave off the Amish neck beard or grow a real beard. Have your trench coat dry cleaned. Don't be a dong. My social circle was Dungeons and Dragons players and comic book nerds. Some girls just want someone they can analyze the entire summer's gray clan from scooter to strife with. But it's alarming how many dudes smell like butt and are dongs on top of that. Every comic book store had that one dude who smells like cat pee. Don't be that dude. Story 18. Every time this question gets posted, the item I see women post most about, hygiene. This is mind-boggling to me. Am I the only guy that showers pretty much daily? And when I shower, I actually use soap and shampoo? And then, post-shower comes deodorant. I mean, come on, guys. Because it's an easy answer, which makes the average guy feel better about himself, since most people do in fact clean themselves. In reality, the smelly ones are irrelevant in the romantic world, but people will always upvote answers which set the bar really low. Story 19. I would say, all too often, basic hygiene is a very big difference between the two groups. Self-care is so important, and I for one am not ever going to be romantically interested in a man. I may be forced to mother to get him to groom himself. I know a guy who is extremely handsome from most people's perspective, the tall, athletic type, but he gets rejected because he just flat out stinks. He smells awful, and nobody wants to be around him for too long. Story 20. Some guys tend to forget the friend part of boyfriends. The guys I know who hang out with women without having romantic expectations in the interaction are better at finding a fitting match to date than those who only speak with women they have crushes on. My only successful relationships have been based on this. My current girlfriend I was good friends with for four months until she flat out told me she wants more from me. Been dating for eight months now. Been the most amazing year of my life. Story 21. I've noticed that guys who have a more positive outlook about dating, in turn, tend to get more dates. These are the guys that, when rejected, say something like, dang, too bad, and move on. Instead of, what a witch. Why would she turn me down? I'm such a nice guy. She should at least give me a chance. Maybe their positive outlook on dating is a symptom of their dating success and not a cause. If you don't be a dong upon being rejected, but are still not thinking positive, the outcome would be the same. Story 22. Make friends with girls, then cherish those same friendships. Sure, you're inevitably going to get friend-zoned by one of them, but the worst-case scenario for that is you guys still get to be friends. If you love and cherish somebody as a friend, it's pretty hard to see that as a bad situation. If you're a dude whose only interactions with women are propositioning them to do it with you, you're going to get creep-zoned. It's like friend-zoned, except without the friends, and also, it's an inescapable heck that'll tank your chances of having interactions with a lot of people. Story 23. At least for me, the kind of men that I'm most attracted to are kind and forgiving, but not pushovers. Good listeners who also have a life and hobbies of their own. I think that is what keeps things interesting. I like to hike, and my current boyfriend will come with me once in a while, but his thing is having a nice yard and playing video games. He asks me about my day, I ask him about his. We both love food, so we cook a good meal, cuddle, and listen to podcasts. Some things together, some things separate. It seems to work out. 
I'm a 32-year-old straight female. Story 24. Not showering, not putting any effort into their physical appearance, generally neglecting everything they touch, their clothes, their living space, their vehicle, their workspace, their attitude, guys who are visibly insecure and take every opportunity to speak about the things they're insecure about versus guys who can acknowledge something and let it go. Jesus, I get a four out of four here. I guess I should get out of bed now. Story 25. Lack of confidence and fear of rejection. The guys who don't often are too afraid that the girl will want that other guy. In doing so, they close the door to having a chance even before it was opened. My husband almost did the same thing when we first met. He thought I wouldn't be interested, and so he hesitated until I made the first move. Then he made his. We've been together almost a decade now. Dang, if I could find a woman that would make the first move. Story 26. About confidence. Yes, have confidence, but if you see that the girl is not interested or she acts weird, leave her alone. She doesn't like you. I'm now married and have been in a relationship for seven years, and it's so annoying when a guy hits on me and I'm just trying to get away. I'm talking about those guys who are going hard with it. Say hi or whatever, I'll respond, and walk away, but don't be the creep who follows me. Story 27. Guys who do have confidence and sincere respect for the woman they're talking to. They are consistent and long-term. Guys who don't are impatient, self-doubting, and looking for the first sign that something won't go their way so they can try for some self-preservation. They change minute by minute and adjust their attitude towards women based on how well they feel they're doing that particular second. Story 28. The guys who get girls are the ones that aren't bitter about not previously getting the girls. If there are two guys at a club, they both go for girls and both get denied. The dude, guy one, that says, yeah, okay, and moves on, is a lot more attractive than the guy, guy two, who gets ticked off and whiny, or to be honest, even incel -y. Watching Love Island this year, and there's a super attractive doctor who all the girls avoid because he's guy number two. Story 29. Self-image. In one way or another, it almost always comes down to this. If you're overconfident, you'll be transparent. It's also tiring to deal with a partner's constant insecurity. Figure out your good qualities and your bad ones, and understand that you might need to work harder in some areas than others, but cut out the resentment. No one likes bitterness or desperation. Story 30. Lots of ex post facto reasoning here. The same behavior is acceptable in a good-looking guy and unacceptable in a bad-looking guy. Honestly, true. I'm guilty. My husband made a joke about mentally handicapped kids when we were dating, I told him it was unacceptable, and I have never heard anything like that from him again. I wouldn't have tolerated it from someone else. Story 31. Successful guys are comfortable being their own person and actively willing to listen and interact with girls as individuals as well. No generalizations. Girls are not puzzles to be solved. I feel like the best friendships and relationships I've had are with guys that were simply willing to share their own thoughts and listen to mine in return. Story 32. The guy who gets girls is actually nice, not nice guy nice, like actually cares about you and does nice things for you without putting you on a pedestal or worshipping you. In a similar vein, he views you as a human person like himself and not as a mystery or a prize or whatever. P.S. He probably doesn't use the phrase getting girls. Story 33. In this thread, a lot of women post about what they want guys to do to ensure there is less work for them. Today, still a lot of women think that men are supposed to chase them and work for them. The sad part is that these women also want full equality too, but secretly they want equality where it suits them. Story 34. Pardon me for interrupting, I'm a guy, but I can tell you exactly what girls want. They tell me all the time, girls want security. How do I know this? Well, every time I'm out at a club and I see a girl I'm interested in, I'll approach her. As soon as I get near to her, she'll start shouting, Security! Security! Story 35. In my experience, the successful guys are sincere and don't let ego get in the way. These are the guys who are actually interested in conversation and don't act like they're God's gift to women. Confidence is attractive, yes, but guys who are a little shy are endearing as well. I think it's all about being genuine. Story 36. The guys that don't are usually not as driven as the guys that do. You have to get out there. Ask the girl out. Worst she can say is no. Then you move on to the next one. Just takes 30 seconds of insane courage. 30 seconds of courage and 3 months to recover your self-esteem enough to try again. 
Story 37. Reading through, and I haven't seen looks mentioned once. Woman, do you really feel that's not a factor, or are you just focusing on controllable issues? I know hygiene, haircuts, and clothes that fit help a lot with looks, but does no one in this thread believe being handsome is a factor? Story 38. Confidence. But also the power of keeping a conversation going, the charm, and the interest they show to get to know me. I get really disappointed to a guy if I start talking, but he's not really listening, and even more if it's him the one who asked me to speak. Story 39. I've noticed that looks don't matter. The guy can be weird looking or ugly, but he still gets the girl because he's funny or charming, or at least shows confidence in himself. Polite, not overbearing, emotionally stable, driven. Story 40. Men in long-term relationships seem to have less hang-ups about trying to be manly, less anger, and more involved with putting others above themselves. Also, confidence seems to be good, but I think that goes for females also. Story 41. For me, it's a natural, crazy sense of humor. I've had some great boyfriends who weren't that great looking and didn't even have a great body, but their sense of humor was superb. I love a guy who makes me laugh. Story 42. What I've noticed is that the guys that get the girls have the ability to forget, kind of like a hitter in baseball. They just completely forget the last at bat, so rejection doesn't really phase them. They just move on. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.